I'm available 24-7 to, to help solve issues. Right. I call me 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning. I don't care. A cross-pollination of Thomas Edison and Tony Stark, Elon Musk. Were you a little naive when you thought I would just I can easily build, build an electric car and, and a rocket? I didn't think it would be easy. Um, I th like I said, I thought they would probably fail. Um, but you know, like creating a company is almost like having a child. So it's sort of like, how do you say your child should not have food? So one, once you have the company, you have to feed it and nurse it yeah. and <laughs> take care of it, of it even if it, it ruins you. Yeah. But uh, I suppose in, there were some tough times in uh, 2008, end of 2008. How did you get through that period of crisis? Yeah. Can we just break for a second? Sure, sure, sure. Of course, yeah. You want to wait a little while? Yeah, I sure hope it was worth it. Sure, sure hope it was worth it. It's everything. And um, I was borrowing money from friends to pay the rent. Well, I mean, Tesla really faced a severe uh, thre threat of death uh, due to the Model 3 production ramp. Essentially, the, the company was bleeding money like crazy. And, and just if, if we didn't solve these problems in a very short period of time, uh, we would die. Uh, and it was extremely difficult to solve them. How close to death did you come? Within, within single digit weeks. 22 hours a day, or like what, how many hours? I was working, yeah, so seven days a week, sleeping in the factory. Uh, I worked away from the, I worked in the, I worked in the paint shop, general assembly, body shop. Do you ever worry about yourself imploding? Like it's just yeah, too yeah. much? Absolutely. No one should put this many hours into work. This is not good. People should not work this hard. I'm not, they should not do this. This is too, it's very painful. Painful in what sense? Uh, it's, it, hurts my, it hurts my brain and my heart. Where, where do you come up with your best ideas? Are you on vacation? Or are you kind of just like in the middle of the night you wake up and start drawing things down? Or uh, You know, it, this is, sounds really cliche, but um, like the shower is probably like, <laughs> yeah. a, you know, wake up and go to shower in the morning. And I think actually what's really happened is kind of stuff has percolated in the subconscious. Right. And it's not really occurring in the shower, but you're kind of getting the results of last night's, you know, computation, basically. Right, right. Whatever uh, area that you get into, um, Given that, you know, even if you're, if you're the best of the best, there's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Um, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. Um, you know, I, I'd say, if, if, and, and also, if you, if you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you, it'll just, it, it's, it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and, and if you don't like it, you just really can't make it work, I think. When you had that third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Starting a business, I'd say, number one is have a high pain threshold. <laughs> That's it. Um, there's a friend of mine who's got a good saying, which is that starting a company is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Okay, that's, um, that's generally what happens because um, when you first start a company, there's lots of optimism and things, things are great. And then, so happiness at first is high. Then you encounter all sorts of issues uh, and happiness will steadily decline. <laughs> and then you'll go through a whole world of hurt. <laughs> That's, and then eventually, you'll, if you succeed, and in most cases, you will not succeed. Um, and, and Tesla almost didn't succeed, came very close to failure. Um, then if, if you succeed, then after a long time, you will finally get back to happiness. <laughs> I think two is you've got to make sure that, that, you, that whatever you're doing is a great product or service. It has to be really great. And I go back to what I was saying earlier where um, if you're a new company, I mean, unless it's like some new industry or, or new market that if it's an untapped market, or then, then uh, you have more ability to, yeah, this, this, the standard is lower for your product or service. But if you're entering anything where there's an existing marketplace against large entrenched competitors, then 
your product or service needs to be much better than theirs. It can't be a little bit better because then you put yourself in the shoes of the consumer and they say, why would you buy it as a consumer? You're always going to buy the trusted brand unless there's a big difference. So a lot of times, uh, you know, an entrepreneur will come up with something which is only slightly better. Um, and it's, it's not, it can't just be slightly better. It's got to be a lot better. Uh, number three, I'd say is constantly seek criticism. Uh, a a well a well thought out critique of whatever you're doing is as valuable as gold, um, and you should seek that from everyone you can, but particularly your friends. Um, usually, your friends know what's wrong, but they don't want to tell you because they don't want to hurt you. Um, so. Yeah. yeah. So they, you know, they say, "Oh, I wouldn't encourage my friend, so I'm not going to tell him what I think is wrong with this product." Yeah. It doesn't mean your friends are right, uh, but very often they are right, um, and you at least want to listen very carefully to what they say. And to everyone, if you're looking for basically, you, you should take the approach that that you're wrong. Um, you know that 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 you, the entrepreneur, are wrong. Your goal is to be less wrong. 